In this tutorial, you'll learn how to graph non-linear equations and functions. So, so far we've studied linear equations and linear inequalities. And today we're going to learn about all the other non-linear equations. There are many different types. We won't cover them all, um, but we will cover the most common in algebra class that are not linear. These are the four most popular graphs that you're going to see at your uh, class level. And I have listed both their um, equations as well as their names. So here on the far left, we have this U-shaped parabola, and that's called a quadratic equation. And its equation always has an x to the power of 2. The second equation has linear parts to it because its x value has a power of 1. And any time you have an x value with an exponent of 1, you're going to have a straight graph. Now the absolute value bars require that the straight graph eventually change directions. Therefore, it can't be linear. Even though parts of it are linear, the whole graph is not continuously straight in one line. So it's linear-ish, or what we call piecewise, right? So this left side is linear, this right side is linear, but the whole graph is not. This is called an absolute value graph, and in general, it has a sharp V shape. It's very different from this parabola. The parabola down here at the vertex, which is also known as the minimum for this graph, it has a nice soft U curve, and the absolute value has a very sharp V turn. So when you're drawing and you're connecting your points, please be careful that you're making sure that you either have a rounded parabola or you have a very sharp linear edge. The third graph is an exponential graph, not because it has an exponent, because quadratics have exponents, but because its exponent is an x. So if your exponent is an x, you are exponential. And this type of graph is something that grows very quickly, very fast. We sort of call this like a J-shaped curve. See that there? It's not, a, it's not exactly the letter J, but it's not a letter U. Right? It doesn't curl back up on both sides. So this is a soft J-shaped curve. And the final one that you'll work with is a square root. So anytime you take the square root of your value, you're going to have this almost like a sideways parabola, but it again, like an exponential, it doesn't curl back up on itself. It stops here and it extends in one direction. So you will be asked to identify these graphs by their name. So if I were to show you something like this, you should know its absolute value. If I show you a soft U curve, you should know it's a quadratic. If I show you a really steep increased J shape, you should know that it's exponential. So you might want to make some flashcards about this. Here's another look at all the ways those functions can uh, appear. I've actually also added a cubic function down here. We don't study it often, uh, but you may see it in a graph. Now notice that my linear graphs, they're going uphill and downhill and all sorts of ways. And the same is true for my quadratic. It can both be pointing upwards, or if it has a negative in front of it, it can be reflected and pointing downward. You might remember that rule from when we studied our transformations, right? When you place that negative sign in front, that's a reflection. Same is true for exponentials. You can be increasing as you read from left to right, like the red graph, or you can be decreasing as you read from left to right, like the green graph. The same with the square roots and the absolute values. They don't show them here, but they could also be reflected or pointing in the opposite direction. Let me give you an example of what I mean. Maybe here on the square root, it might look like this. Or maybe here on the absolute values, it might look like that. All right, so you can be facing upwards or downwards. Okay, let's take a look at a pretty basic question you might be asked on a Regents exam. Here's a question from a recent Regents exam, and it says which type of function is shown in the graph below? So this is where your knowledge of the shapes of each equation comes into play. 
So again, remember you had that U-shaped parabola, you had that sharp linear uh, V-shaped graph, the absolute value, you had the, the J-shaped soft increase, and you also had the square root, which kind of extended almost like a small hill. So hopefully you remember, this one is a nice increase, okay, but it doesn't curl back up on itself, so it's not a parabola. So this one is exponential. So if you didn't know that, then that's a good sign that you probably should create some flashcards to help yourself remember the shapes. All right, let's get started. Today you're actually going to practice graphing these nonlinear equations and you're going to use your graphing calculator. Don't worry, you don't have a TI-84 yet? You can use Desmos Online Graphing Calculator. I'll show you how to use both in this video. So let's start off learning how to use the TI-84 calculator. You got to know where all those different symbols are. How do you get to the exponents? How do you get to the square root signs or the absolute values? How do you put in the letter X? How do you view the table of points? So here's a little cheat sheet for you. In order to use a square root sign, you have to press the second key and then you have to press this X squared key. If you're not sure where they are, they're over here, and the x squared key is over here. Above those keys, you can see the actual square root sign. And that's why you have to press this blue key first. Anything that's written in blue on your calculator will only function if you press this blue key first. Now let's say you have a square root, but the index is a 3 or maybe the index is a 4. We won't do too much of that now, but just in case you're wondering, you can get to that by pressing the math key. Once you press the math key, you'll see all of these options. Now, if you want to do a cube root, there's a little fast key right here. You'd press the number 4. But if you want some other root, like let's say you wanted the fourth root, well, first you'd have to type the root number. Then, after you press the math button, you can choose number 5. Let me show you how that looks. So on my calculator here, I'm going to type um, my index or my number 4. Then, once I hit the math button, and I can either arrow down or I can just click the number 5. So if I arrow down to highlight it, I can then press enter. And you'll notice that the 4 is automatically put up in that index position. That's how I would find the fourth root of a number. All right, let's take a look at the absolute value bars. The absolute value bars are a little more complicated to find, but here's two ways you can go about it. These are two ways to get to the same character. So one is by pressing this math button, then using the right arrow key to get to this menu. This is called the number menu. And if you look at the first one, it says ABS. That stands for absolute value. So let me show you on the function calculator here. I can press math, right arrow, so that I highlight this menu, the number menu, and choose number one. There's my absolute value bars. I'm gonna type anything I want inside here. Maybe I want the letter X. Well, that's when you press this button right here. Oops. <laughs> oh, I can't write on this one. It's live. This button right here. <laughs> so if I go back to, oh, now, see, if this ever happens to you, just press second and mode. That'll get you to the quit function. All right, again, press math, arrow over, Choose number one, absolute value. And then if you want to press the letter X, it's right here next to the green key. Now, if you want something else inside your absolute value bars, you can keep typing. But if you want something outside the absolute value bars, you need to press the right arrow, like this. All right, the second way to get there is like going to the back of the book and looking something up in the index. That's this choice down here. It's called the catalog and it's like the index of a textbook. 
Once you press the second button and you type number zero, that brings you to the catalog of anything you can look up. And conveniently, absolute value starts with A, so it's the first one on the list. Press enter, and there it is. You can do the same on the Desmos graphing calculator. Simply click on graphing calculator, and then for us, let me minimize this to fit my recording screen here. If you would like to see the keyboard, you have to use this little button on the lower left. So let's say I'm typing Y and then an equal sign and an X and I want to get a power of two. Well, I'd have to go down here to the Desmos keyboard. And here are my powers. The one with the A to the second power is actually going to put in the power two, like that. But if I were to delete this because I wanted a different power, like let's say I wanted a power of five, I would need to use this one here, the A with the B power. The B stands for put in your own number. And then I can type it. That's pretty neat looking. All right, another graph that you could use or a symbol is the absolute value bars right here. And then another one is the square root sign right there at the bottom. It's kind of hard to see uh, because my screen is, uh, is my recording screen is a little bit um, too high. There we go. So I can press the square root sign. Again, it's not going to graph anything unless I type y equals. And the same is true with this calculator. If you want to look at a graph, you actually have to type this y equals button right here. All right, let's get started. Graph function f, right, graph f of x is equal to the negative square root of x plus 1 on the set of axes below. Now, I can turn my graphing calculator on. I can go to the y equals button here, and then I can type in my equation. If you don't remember how to get to those symbols, let's get a little refresher here. So type your function into the y equals button, just like this. And then when you go to look at your table of points, you're going to look for points that actually fit on your graph. So you don't want to pick a point that has like a negative 19 in your, in your table because your graph doesn't go to negative 19. So when you're looking at your table, you're going to need to transcribe that or write that on your paper to let the person who's reading it know what points you're looking at. Try and pick points that will fit on your graph and will help you to draw the correct shape. So let's type this in. So here in my calculator, I'm going to type in the equation in my y equals button. I'm going to type the negative sign down here by the enter key. The square root sign is second x squared and then an x. Now don't forget, the plus 1 was not underneath that radical sign. It was outside. So if I just type minus 1 right here, you see how that square root sign keeps going? I don't want that. I'm going to go back and I'm going to delete these characters. I'm going to press the right arrow key so that my square root sign stops. And then my plus one is on the outside. That is very important. Now, if you remember correctly from the beginning of the lesson, the square root graph looks something like this. So hopefully when I'm done, that's what my drawing will look like. So in order to do that, I'm going to press second and then go over here to the word graph. I'm going to look at a table of points. Now I can arrow up and look at more points, but you'll notice I get an error here. That's because the graph doesn't go down that far. And then you'll notice after the one and the zero, I have some pretty crazy numbers. But if I keep going, I actually find some nice integer points. And those are the ones I should write on my table. So I'm not going to write all these crazy decimals, but I'm certainly going to fill in all these nice integer points. So it looks like I'm going to start with zero, one, so let's write that down. Just jot it down on the side of your graph. I'm going to graph 0, 1. I'm going to graph 1, 0. I'm going to graph 4, negative 1. And I'm going to graph 9, negative 2. Now I don't need to go any higher because my graph doesn't even go up to 9. So let's start graphing. 0, 1. 1, 0. 
4, negative 1, and 9, negative 2 would be off the grid. So I'm going to make that nice, soft curve and put an arrow at the end. Now notice I'm not putting an arrow over here. You know why? Because when I looked at my table, it said error. So I don't go down that far. All right, ready to try another one? The absolute value of x minus 3 plus 2. Do you remember what overall shape this graph should have? Yeah, a V-shape. <laughs> so hopefully when we're done jotting down our points from the table, we have a nice V-shape. Now this is a pretty large graph, so I can probably get a bunch of points. Let's use our Desmos calculator this time. The absolute value of x minus 3 and then a plus 2. So down here, remember there's a keyboard in the lower left. So the absolute value of x, and I think it was minus 3, minus 3 inside the absolute value bars, not outside. So I've got to go back, move my cursor, and type it inside. And then it was a plus 2. Now I can type plus 2. So looking at this, I kind of have an idea of what it should look like. Looks like the V-shape stops right here around the point 3, 2. And now I want to look at the table. So if you're using the Desmos online calculator, you got to press this gear right up here. Click it once and click on this table. All right, so you can look at some points here. Negative 2, 7, negative 1, 6, 0, 5, 1, 4, 2, 3. Now, all of these points will definitely fit on the graph, but don't forget, you want to be able to see if the graph is going to change directions. So you can type in more points here yourself and you can see what's going on, right? See how I'm going down? Six, five, four, three, two, and then I start going back up. Three, four, five, six, seven, that's important. Okay, so I think I'm gonna start with um, maybe zero, five. So I had zero, five, I had one, four, I had two, three, then I had three, two, et cetera, et cetera. Like four, oh, did I didn't have four, one, I gotta look carefully. It had 4, 3, 4, 3, 5, 4. So I had 4, 3, 5, 4. And I probably could stop there. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 4, 2, 3. I'm kind of seeing a pattern here, right? It's linear, so it has a constant rate of change of down 1 over 1. And then at 3, 2, I turn back around. And it's symmetrical. So I actually could probably just keep drawing even without having a table of points. Now I know it keeps going in both directions, so I'm going to draw arrows on each end. All right, it's time for you to practice some on your own. Go back to the Google Classroom and try those uh, four graphs that I have for you on the worksheet using Kami. Good luck.